I was actually just invited to Yale University. I gave a lecture. It was great for them to have me on business and ethics. And what I tried to explain was that it's not corporations' ro role to kind of guide society in some sort of kind capacity. It's to fill demand, right? So, right. And make no mistake about it. McDonald's isn't trying to help your kids. They're trying to... They're worse make, for the world. Right. You know, cigarette <laughs> companies, alcohol companies. You know, drug makers don't give away the drug. Right? Exactly. They're not Jonas Salk. They're, they're charging you an arm and a leg, and people are dying because they can't get access to it. Let's be honest what the role of corporations is. So stop trying to pretend that it's something it's not. I, I think mean, it's unfortunate. If you were, I mean, forget about uh, theologians, priests, and everything. You ask any scientist, doctor, what's worse for the world, McDonald's or you? Yeah, it's and not They even would close. all have to say, it's not even close, you're it's right. not even close. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no one gets type 2 and, diabetes and from getting a little. And the bottom line is of tomorrow, if tomorrow I shut down Ashley Mass and not a single affair would be prevented. That is the truth of the matter, right? Uh, there, there is, there, there is, there, there, I just got to Japan. There were millions of affairs happening before I got there. And if I shut down tomorrow, same with uh, here. Yeah. Affairs have always happened in society. We pay lip service to being monogamous. We've never been monogamous. Are there um, are there competitors? Because I haven't heard of anybody. Uh... Just the workplace. You know, where do most people have affairs still? It's not on Ashley Madison yet. It, it is at work. You right. know? And that is the worst place to do it. You risk your job. Your coworkers find out. And invariably, there's there's threats around promotions and unfair promotions and those kinds of things. So that is the trap people fall into. But women are changing that attitude. You know, they've worked too hard to get the opportunities and employment. They are no longer dipping into that pool. And so they're starting to go online looking for more anonymous things just like men on business trips, right? When they're when you're 100 miles away from home, it doesn't even count. That's what the city of Las Vegas has been marketing for the last decade so effectively, right? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. What are they saying? They're saying, you know, give yourself a hall pass. Step out of your own body for a second. And, and that's really what so many people do. Look at the guy. I mean, you know, politicians, the other hypocrite uh, oh, yeah, pool. That's... Bill Clinton probably would have railed against this to get votes. But, you know, God, he should be your best customer. <laughs> yeah, l listen, any, any politician, I, I'm in a sense sympathetic to them. You know, I know what it must be like living away from your family for extended periods of time, to be under the stress and, and, and the watchful eye of that job. And plus, I don't care what anyone says, interns are like fans. They're, they're like groupies. Oh, yeah. And any of us do poorly with temptation. You know that very personally. I know that very personally. Definitely. I don't care where, if it's food. If someone puts something in front of you, you think you can withstand it. Most of us overestimate our ability to withstand temptation. So you try being around some fans. It is not an easy thing to walk away from. Yeah, no. And, and temptations of, of any kind. And uh, this is the least of, of uh, evils to me. But it's not. It's actually the, the biggest, in a sense, um, uh, existing taboo still in America. Right. right. It's not pornography. We've kind of come to digest it. But Hugh Hefner's a celebrity. And if anything, he's an iconoclast or you know, we view him as a modern day feminist. Right. Right. Infidelity is still the topic that infuriates people. And part of the reason is we're pretty ignorant about it, right? Unfaithful people have never let themselves be studied. We don't know how prevalent it is. You could ask me right now, how many people in New York have affairs? I can tell you, based on my service and the money I make, this is what I think, but we don't really know. Is it 80% of the population, 40% of the population? Is it younger men? Is it older men? Do they have their first affair when their wives get pregnant? Or is it seven years like Marilyn Monroe? We don't know anything about infidelity, so that's part of our problem. All we know is don't do it, but we don't seem to know why, how it happens, and why do we keep wanting to do it? Well, you... Um, you maintain that you have not had an affair. Like, Yet. you don't I use... cheated when I was in college. I, I mean, I admit it. But what I, what I really think has happened to me, God's honest truth, is that I talk about cheating 24-7. Tomorrow I'm going to ABC News. I spoke to uh, Jay Thomas this afternoon. We talked about it. I'm talking to you guys about it. The, the, the bottom line is... Uh, I think when I see myself slipping, I'm better able to catch myself the most. Will I always be able to do that? No. And if my wife turned a cold shoulder to me, then I, I would feel like I, I have the right to do it. But that's not the case right now. So just like the guy who opens an ice cream store, maybe at some point he just doesn't want to eat any ice cream. I am talking about cheating more than any man on the planet. So right now, I have no appetite for it. Ironically enough, that is, you know, and you didn't do this on purpose, but I think that's a great marketing tool that you as the head of the company are, in fact, uh, not... Not cheating. I, I've looked at it two ways. If I had more vision, I think I would have hired a front, right? This uh, is this has been, um, on some levels, challenging for me as a person. I'm just a regular family guy. I live in a, uh, a community in Toronto that's pretty conservative, but now everybody knows my business, literally. Right. I have two young kids, right? I don't know the repercussions of that. One day my daughter might come home crying. You know, she's 16 years old and says, Daddy, how could you? You know, my boyfriend cheated on me. He says, you started Ashley Mass and he's allowed to do this. Like, I don't really know the full consequences yet. Well, I was going to say, how, has that affected your life at all with people judging you in the community not, you live in? Or? Not to my face. You know, I always said to my wife when she asked me, is this that going to happen? I said, if they were my true friends, that'll never happen. So they, they've never, if anything, they've become fans and they like to... 
uh, come with me when I, you know, um, give away an award on I'm the sure. AVN Awards or whatever it ends up being. So, <laughs> and, have you done and, that? And, you and give the, away the stuff. Joke, the joke is that you know I used to be a lawyer, but now my mom's finally proud of the work that I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you give out awards at AVM? Yeah, I gave away the best crossover star of the year, who was like in Piranha or whatever. It's fun, you know. I, I like to do that because that's an environment, that's a community that I've, likes I've me. been there. I've done the same yeah, thing. That's and, an environment, and, and, and I'm sure they're awfully, you know, they're fans and kind to you. I don't get a lot of kindness. <laughs> (laughs) So when I can find an environment like this one, I'm happy to participate in it. No, I'm a big, you know, listen, I I think it's a a great idea. I think it's a real service. You you have to be a libertarian in this world when it comes especially to sex. You can't tell people what to do. Let them be. If they want to be in same-sex relationships, open relationships, they want to cheat, that's their business. And the weird thing is repressing it makes makes Uh, worse stuff. That's what makes serial killers. What I hear from women all the time is how frustrated and angry they were with their partners, with their children, with their colleagues at work, whatever. They found a lover. All of a sudden now, they're in the best mood. Exactly. <laughs> they stopped taking on it. They, they, they went from loneliness and depression to someone thinks they're an object of desire, and they are beyond happy. And they start giving back in a positive way. Like, honestly, speak to a woman who for the last two years has not been touched, paid attention to. She is an angry person. Sure, and, and guys too. I mean, they, For they, sure. They, they can but go guys have But guys have always had cathartic outlets, right? Guys have always been able to gravitate towards pornography e- even easier now. There's strip clubs all over the place. Yeah, There's women are different. They don't, right. Yeah, yeah. Women don't have it. Although in Japan, it was crazy. This guy showed me this part of town where they take former 80s male pop stars who are past their prime, but they still have the nice <laughs> hair and the old cars. Sounds funny, right? And, and they will literally go down on women for a fee, married women for a fee. <laughs> that sounds great. That's a place it, you should it was open. One of the funniest things I've ever seen. I was I waited there for about four hours to see if anyone would come by, but uh, I didn't see any women going by. But that's apparently what that part of town does. Based on what you know, you've seen. What percentage do you think do cheat? In, like of all married people in this country, what percentage? Uh, uh, Could you I, put a number on it? Yeah, uh, I think if it's not eight out of ten guys, then you know I, I'm missing a boat. Something magical. See, I, I agree with you. you know? I agree with you. Um, I think the female side is less. I do. You know, we have tons of guys in their fifties and sixties on the service. Not that many women of that genre, right? But um, I think it's changing. I think women of this era are much more likely to be um, discontent or not to tolerate discontentment, right? My mom got married at 19, where, where was she going to go? She wasn't going to go right. anywhere. Women these days who have had boyfriends in college, they have careers, whatever, they're not going to tolerate that. They're going to they're, they're gonna look to pursue something. So I think it's 40, 50% of women, too. I really do. I think it's wow. probably half of them. I, I, listen, I think you could argue this could prevent crime, for crying out loud. <laughs> well, that's that famous free economics argument, kind of, right? It, it's that... You know, New York used to talk about all this great movement made towards crime, and some of it was legit around policing, but a lot of it was the institution of abortion laws. Mm. That prior to that, there were so many unwanted kids being born, right? right? Um, and, and those families were really dysfunctional. And dysfunctional families lead to what? A lot of problems around, you know, uh, violence and crime and all this kind of stuff. And so if you change Drug those... Use like crazy. And, and so same thing. Remember, there is a consequence to divorce. The consequence is kids raised in a single-parent household, less access to education, yeah. more trouble with the law, more trouble with alcohol, those kinds of things. So if we know there's a, a known problem, and that's marital breakdown, if we can supplement it by letting people get a little something on the side and they stay together to raise those kids together... That is a potential net win for yeah. society. They see, that's such a fascinating thing. I, w- I wish there, there could be some really accurate statistics and uh, about well, how, how many how many divorces this potentially uh, stops. Man, I got to tell you already, like every week I get a call from another. Like right now we're working with Duke University, MIT, University of California, yeah. Michigan. Like these institutions have been dying to get this kind of big data for years. It's hard to study infidelity. You can't use the student body. They're not married. Mm-hmm. That's not a relevant cohort, right? right. So, so to study it, how? They put an ad in a paper, three crazy people respond who had an affair six years ago. How does that help you? Here, 25,000 people a day sign up to Ashley Masson. They self-publish while they're having an affair. They send millions of lines of communication every single day. The amount of data they can collect in one day is more than they've been able to do in their entire career of studying this prior to that. Listen, you could, I mean, you could go down the, the line and just look at it this way. You could say, uh, you know, What's the biggest cause of teen angst and crime in, in this country? Probably being from a broken home, divorce. For sure it is. What's the biggest cause of divorce? Probably getting caught cheating. What does your company do? Try not to get caught, make you not get caught cheating. So Listen, it's like you could make a direct connection to the, that. The, and, 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 and unfortunately, we hear the opposite argument, that I'm representative of everything that's wrong in America, and then this is going to break down families. I try and Stupid. say to people all the time, don't confuse an affair and a discovered affair. They're two different things, Right. 
80% of infidelity never gets discovered. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you mess around with a stripper, whether you're at a massage parlor, whether you see a prostitute, or whether you, you know, see someone on my side, most of it never gets discovered. Yeah. So we're talking about the discovered infidelity, gets yelled about, screamed about. And remember, it's only in America. This doesn't happen in France, I gotta tell you. You know, in France- oh, France, forget it. No, but it's just an example of a bit of thinking. People still don't wanna be cheated on there, it's the truth. Right. But should they find out, they don't just walk out the door. That isn't the initial reaction. The, the initial reaction is, oh, maybe he or she needed to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm actually partly responsible for that. There's a bit more I I introspection. There's a bit more conversation. They're more here, enlightened. Here it's kind of like, oh, I didn't follow the Disney fairy tale. I'm packing my bags. I don't care what consequences and economic. I'm walking out the door. It's a terrible attitude. Yeah. No, I, I mean, listen, I, I, uh, I think it's a serious discussion because people hear something like this and they, they tend to think, ah, it's a joke situation, but it's a... You know, it's it, you're right. There should be studies about stuff like this. I have more know? members than the uh, NRA. We're we're we're, we're a huge organization well, that's in this good sense. News. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> I'm just trying to say that we're 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 a massive organization. We represent a huge populace, right? And I think they can't all be wrong. They can't all be bad people. Like when when General Petraeus found out she had a hand affair. Like the guys fighting a war. Could you imagine how stressful it is leaving a war? Like I don't even want to think Absolutely. about that. So some hot reporters hanging out with him for a while, <laughs> and and any 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 beds are down. Like, so now he's incapable of, of leading or yeah. that is, to me, that is the most flawed logic I've ever heard. When did that um, become uncool? No, but at one point <laughs> he was so trusted. He's in charge of the CIA. This guy's in charge of the whole thing. Oh, he bet we can't trust him anymore. Right. Like that, that's thing, a, lot, a lot of spouses, are, you know, women do turn their backs. If they have a couple of kids, there's no sex in the marriage. And, you know. 24 million um, American marriages are defined as sexless less than three times in one year. Sex is had less than three times in one year. How many of those people signed up for lives of celibacy? I, I don't think they signed up to be nuns and priests. And so what are they supposed to do? It, it, people say they're bad for having an affair. I don't think so. I think they're actually trying to be a bit selfless. They're trying to stay married. They're trying to find a way to contribute to a family dynamic, economically, raising kids, an extended family, a home, a household. And what they're trying to do is just, you know, get something to them that is, you know, biologically driven, Look, right? Look, if this prevents broken families, that is, there's no, that's the number For one sure thing that screws up kids. Sure I mean, th there's the logic right there. I'm going to take a break. You can hang around, right? Absolutely. Noel Biederman, our biggest supporter, AshleyMadison.com. Check it out. Back after this. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.